I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. I do not have any changes to the agenda. So, Thank you. Um, I do not have any changes to the agenda. From the May 2nd council meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Use one that is. Um, on ordinances, his name is Miss Bell. Who? Tim's. Which ordinance? Um, right in the middle of the second page. Or not. <laughs> Any other discussion or corrections or comments? All in favor? Aye. Abstain. Agreed. Were you guys going to vote? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Okay. Opposed? Motion carried. Bills in between. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. I, I wanted to ask the solid waste. Can you see that's what we have for our free, our free uh, landfill costs? Is that what that was? Both that and our regular okay. monthly amount. But yes, the majority of that. It was 3413 Yeah. Okay. They hauled a lot. It does. 80 tons. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, discussions on bills in between? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. On the current claims, I have one change on page six. Uh, we're removing 3,888 from the attorney's bill for a total of 1,818, therefore making our total current claims $58,570.67. What page is that on? Six. Page six, <coughs> top of page six. Okay, I am, we are reducing the attorney fee bill by $3,888 to now be $1,818, which changes our total current claims to $58,570.67. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, Misty, she's here. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're all get to enjoy our 2014 audit presentation yeah. tonight, which was our first agenda item. And is this Donna? Yes. Okay, Donna Danker. Hey, no, I have two more and I have notes. Can I just 
send them with you. Sure. There's ten. Sorry about that. I can't hear you. Can't hear me. It's odd. You have to speak a little closer to it. Okay. Now can you hear me? Barely. Barely. Yeah. Well, How about now? You just about have to swallow it. <laughs> I'm not sure I can talk and do that at the same time. Uh, Missy is handing out the audit report, the letter to governance, and the management letter to all of you at this point in time. Um, the audit report is the thickest of the three, so I would like to start there tonight. Um, page one of the report, I think it has the table of contents, is the auditor's opinion. This is basically the report that you pay us to uh, prepare for you. And um, uh, I will go through it very briefly here. Um, basically, the first paragraph just talks about that. We're we, going to need you to speak up. I'm sorry. In the mic. Yeah. There's no way to turn it up, huh? <laughs> OK. I will try. The first paragraph just says that we have audited your financial statements. Um, second paragraph talks about you are responsible for the fair presentation of the financial statements. Is this better? Yes. Okay. Um, under auditor's responsibility, it just talks about the responsibilities um, um, that we are going to audit the financials and we did not audit the Housing and Redevelopment Commission which is also included as a component unit in the audit report. Um, next paragraph talks a little bit about what we do during an audit and the last paragraph on that page says that we believe our evidence is sufficient in order to enable us to give an opinion. The second page, we do have a qualification in the audit report um, we did come, we did try to audit the inventories, which involves actual observation of some of the inventories and test counts, that kind of thing. And we were not able to do that at the end of 04. We did come down and visit the different um, departments, but it just, we couldn't get to that place that we were comfortable. So that is a qualification exception, the only one in this report, though. Could you speak a little bit? Okay. Um, that only applies to your enterprise funds. Okay, I will make that point. Other than that, it is an unqualified opinion on the balance of the financial statements for the city of Hot Springs, meaning that we believe they're presented fairly in all material respects. Other matters, we do, um, there is a management discussion and analysis that's required with the government financial statements you have chosen to omit it in this particular year. And the very final paragraph there is that we have issued a report on internal controls, and we'll look at that a little bit later. As we go into the financial statements themselves, there's a tremendous amount of information here. And it's not going to be possible for me to go through it, you know, any of it in detail tonight, but I will try to hit the high points for you as we go through. Page three is the statement of net position, which includes, first of all, all the government activities, second of all, your business type activities, that's a second column, that totals up, and then we have the component unit, which is the Fall River Housing Authority. Um, this is an accrual-based statement, meaning that we do have, now is it too loud? No. Okay. No. No. <laughs> I can the louder the better. The louder the better. Huh? Right. This is an accrual-based statement, um, and so this is where you're going to see your capital assets, at least on your government funds. So um, the total column there, you've got cash of $4 million at the end of this year. We've got receivables of about a million, and then we've got about $16 million in capital assets, which is building and land and equipment that is owned by the city. 
This is the only place you're going to see the debt for the government funds. Most of your debt's carried in your business type activities, though. So we've got total debt for the year of a little over $5 million. It also lists, um, under the net position, it lists all of the different restrictions that you have on your net assets. Um, the bottom line there is $4.5 million, though, in unrestricted net assets held by the city at the end of the year. Okay? Um, yes, 2014. So, please, um, if you would like me to talk about something in more detail, just wave your hand. Can and, I ask you a question? Sure. What, you, you've got note two, note two, note five, seven, notes all through mm -hmm. this page. Could you tell me what those are for? Um, the financial statements are comprised of, first of all, these statements of the actual numbers, the results of operation, and the, and the assets and liabilities that you have. But then we have the notes to the financial statement, which give additional information regarding a lot of these numbers. And so we'll go through those notes when we get further back in the report, okay? <coughs> Page four is the um, statement of activities. This is also done on an accrual basis of accounting. Um, the first column there is going to be the expenses broken down by function, the first part being your primary government and the second part being your business activities. The uh, differences here will be we'll have depreciation expense. We don't have payments on debt as expenses, which we show in the, in the other um, set of statements that we're going to look at shortly. Um, all of the income there, charges for service, operating, capital, grants, and contributions, those are specific to each one of those functions that, were, that they're listed there by. But if you go down below, then all of your general revenues are listed with sales tax and property tax being your two largest sources of income, of course. This also includes the results of operation for the component unit as well, which is at the middle of the page there. If we go on to the next page, which is five, this is all of your government funds. And we treat every fund as being um, and is reported separately and, and basically treated as a major fund. So general fund, liquor lodging, the additional sales tax fund, the bid district, and the capital improvement fund, and the cemetery for veteran care, those are all separate funds and reported separately on here. This first statement on page number five is a balance sheet for each one of those individual funds. So it's going to give you your cash and um, all of the different assets, available assets, that you have at this point in time, 12, 31, 14. So that's a little over a million six. Of those, the two most significant ones being cash and you do have the deferred special assessment um, receivable that's out there. Under liabilities, um, you have some payables, some short-term type liabilities, um, and then we do have some deferred revenue out there, meaning that it wasn't collected within a, a soon enough time frame to be used to cover debts at this period, okay? Um, the fund balances are then detailed out, and all of the different restrictions are included there. We have total unassigned fund balance in the general funds of $276,000 at the end of this year. Um, page six reconciles this statement to the first one that we looked at on page three. Okay, I won't go through that in detail. Page seven and eight are the revenue and expenses for the governmental funds. Same columns, general fund, uh, liquor and lodging, and so on. Um, the first page, page seven, is just a laundry list of all of the different revenue sources that you had during this time period. And again, you can see sales tax and property taxes are the two most significant. Going on to page eight, we have all of the expenses for the year. 
in these six funds again. Um, most significant ones, um, I'm sure you all are aware, the police, the highway and street, um, the debt service fund, and the capital LA funds. Page nine is the reconciliation of the statement we just looked at to the statement that the, on page four, I believe, um, and shows all the differences and why they don't, don't exactly match. So page 10 are your proprietary funds, and each one of these has also been treated as a major fund this year too. Um, this year, the new thing is the golf course was moved over here before it's been held in the general fund before. Um, water, sewer, solid waste, golf course, and Ellen's Plunge are the five proprietary funds that we have here. Um, you will notice the water fund and the sewer fund, which um, have surpluses every year, both have a net position that's at the bottom of the page, kind of an equity balance if you want to think of it that way, in the positive, as well as the solid waste fund. Um, but we do have deficit positions in the golf course and in Evans Plunge. Any questions on this statement? <coughs> Okay, page 11 is the statement of operations for the proprietary funds. So we have all five of them listed again, and the amount of revenue that each one of them brings in. About halfway down the page, we've got the operating income or loss for each one of the funds. And you will see the first three have a positive um, operating income for the year. And then we've got the golf course and we've got Evans Plunge. So you can see what the net from operations were for both of those funds. Debt payments and interest and so on and transfers get shown down below. Questions on that? Um, page 12 is a statement of cash flow for the proprietary funds only. Um, this basically is, it shows you where the cash went. It's reconciling your beginning cash to your ending cash. That's what the purpose is here. And it shows you how much was paid to suppliers, to employees. Um, down below, under, underneath the first section there, it'll tell you um, how much was paid um, for non-operating type activities. Um, and then capital and financing activities. So it just helps you understand a little bit more where the money's going to, where it came from and where it's going to. Page 13 of the audit report, um, we start on the notes to the financial statement that you were asking about. Um, and note one is always gonna be um, the, uh, significant accounting policies. It's gonna be a disclosure of those. Um, this goes on for quite a while. They're quite complicated when you get to government type activities. Um, but there really are no changes from year to year. These are the policies that you've adopted. This is the way your financial statements get put together. So if you ever have questions on any account or may wonder a little bit about you know, what could be in this account, I would come and look at note one and hopefully it will give you some additional information. Um, I'm not going to go through note one, though, tonight. Um, if you've been on the council before, you've probably read it <laughs> several times in the past. Um, I think if we flip to, yeah, page 20, we start on note two to the financial statements. That's how long the significant accounting policies goes on. This one talks about your deposits and investments talks about the different types of risks that you are subject to related to your cash and your investment balances, um, and gives a little bit of information about how you deal with each one of those areas. On 21, at the end of note two, 
um, there is a disclosure about the restricted cash balances that you probably noticed on the balance sheets that we looked at. These would be dollars that are held for a particular purpose or because they are required to be held in separate accounts. Note three talks about deferred inflows. I think I pointed those out to you on the financial statements there. Uh, revenue that is not received within um, a soon enough time period to help you defray debts of this period. Property taxes, this is required. The calendar for collecting property taxes and recording property taxes. Um, receivables and payables, not aggregated. They're both stated individually on the financial statements. On page 22, here is a little bit more detail about all the transfers that we saw in the face of the financial statements between the different funds. Um, so they get netted within the funds, but here you can see where they're going out to and where they're coming from. Um, there's a disclosure under there, the city did approve the transfer back of cash to various funds for internal services provided, which I think is your utilities. Um, and then there is a disclosure right there about the golf course being moved out of general fund back to the proprietary funds. Note seven talks about your long-term debt. This little chart on this page, it starts with the balance from the previous year. It shows how much you may have borrowed in addition to for the current year. The third column there shows the repayments that you made, and they're broken down by the primary government and the, and the enterprise funds. And then it calculates over to what the ending balance is for the end of the year. Now, there's more detail on the next page. Um, each of the individual notes is listed, um, and it gives a description as to what the payment terms are, what the interest rate is, when it's due, and so on. So it's good information to have always, I think, for the council. Page 24, we still are in note seven, this long-term debt, it goes on for quite some time. Um, this is what we call the aggregate maturities. This is the amount of principal and interest that is due until the notes are paid in full. So you know what your commitment is um, until the loans are repaid. There are some pledged revenues that you've got um, related to these loans and the business type activities under that subheading. Um, we have a little bit of a description on that where there are some revenues pledged in order to pay, you pay this debt off. Um, no legal contingencies to speak of to report in the audit. Page 25, we go to the changes in capital assets. Um, the biggest change here, you'll see quite a bit coming out as transfers or deletions on the government funds. That's again the golf course coming out, and we'll see it coming in over on the proprietary funds. This lists out everything by the major categories. First from being assets not being depreciated, second category assets being depreciated, then there is your depreciation, your accumulated, and the expense for the current year. Page 26, we have exactly the same information on the proprietary funds. Where did we start at last year, how much came in, how much was taken out, and what the ending balance is. <laughs> No questions so far? Okay. <laughs> Never know if I'm too, spending too much time or not enough time. Um, page 27, we start on note 10, which is about your retirement plan. Uh, you are a member of the state retirement system. The very last sentence in the second paragraph there discloses the amount that was paid um, by the city and by the employees both. Risk management is basically how do you protect yourself, and this is mostly about insurance. Um, 
the first one there, health insurance, you buy it from an outside provider. Liability insurance, you belong to the South Dakota Public Insurance Alliance, I can say that. Um, and so there's more disclosures because it is a self-employed plan, though it is called a public entity risk pool. A lot of organizations have gotten together. On the next page, page 28, workers' comp. You also belong to the South Dakota Municipal League's workers' compensation fund. Same situation, a lot of organizations in South Dakota have come together and um, they are self-insuring. Then we have unemployment, which you do pay into the state of, of South Dakota. Um, note 12, we've got some new accounting standards that are coming up and um, this gives a discussion as to the real basic generalities as to what they require um, and how they may impact the city. Though in several instances, um, the actual impact has not been calculated at this point in time. But it is kind of a just put the reader on notice that there's some new stuff coming up, most especially regarding pension plans and reporting. So, not a fun area. Page 29, we go to note 13, it's about halfway down the page. Um, these are the notes that we consider to be significant that came out of the Fall River Housing um, Authority. So we've basically just picked up the material items that came out of that particular report and have included them in here for the reader um, to have access to them. Um, I think we'll just go on, flip on through to page 33, which is our report on internal controls. And we do have a few items that we've reported this year in internal controls again. Um, I, I, I know you've made a lot of changes, and this audit is 2014, so sometimes it's hard to remember what's changed since 2014 up until now. Um, so we do have some findings, very hopeful that most of these will be cleared up in 2015. Um, if we go to page 35, this is a required disclosure in a government audit, just what findings came forward from the previous year and what have been resolved. And we did have the previous year the compliance with the debt covenants that was corrected and is not repeated in here, okay? Um, 36 and 37 are the findings. And I would kind of guess you probably talked about a lot of these items in your meetings as you've made changes to policies and so on. Okay, so Missy says yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, we've noticed a lot of changes since 2014. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. That's good, I'm glad to hear yes. that. <laughs> um, the first one is internal control over record keeping. Basically, all the bank recs for 2014 were not completed until after the end of the year. Um, this has a result of you not getting accurate financial statements because there were a lot of adjustments that were necessary. So all of those were caught up, and I understand 15 and 16 is caught up as well. Um, number two there, the inventory records. Um, I told you we came and we tried to count. There didn't seem to be consistent policies. Um, two of the, of the departments that we visited hadn't even done the inventories yet when we came to visit. And then a couple of them, when we tried to do test counts, we had some discrepancies. So, um, with, you know, talking with the staff here and, and making recommendations as soon as we could, there needs to be a consistent policy so that Everyone's doing it the same, and there are some internal controls in place. Uh, the third one, the first two are material weaknesses. Those are more serious, okay? Then we have significant deficiencies, so we don't consider these quite as, as important, or I don't want to say not quite as important, maybe not quite as serious, okay? Um, documentation. Um, the journal entries. Uh, didn't always have documentation that we could review. Journal entries are, are, it's a mechanism to make corrections into the accounting records. 
they need to have the same degree of internal controls over them as writing a check or making a deposit or billing or anything else. Um, so there needs to be some review of those. Um, and then also, department heads are supposed to sign purchase orders and in our testing we did find a couple times when they had missed signing or approving the purchase orders. On the next page, we have complaints with budget laws. Um, there were several line items that were overspent during the year and under condition, I've got them all listed there. I'm not gonna try to read them all to you at this point. Um, although a supplemental appropriation was made for 14, the expenditures did exceed the, the appropriation for the year. Um, state law does require that you have made those appropriations in order to cover those overages. And then the very last one, compliance with debt issuance laws. We had said something about this last time. Uh, there was a, a loan issued with a seven-year term on it, and state statute only allows a five-year term on a regular bank loan. So, okay. Will that continue to be a finding now that we're under five years? Will that be a repeat finding for 15? No, because this is 2014, I think we're all kind of knowing that we've made a lot of these corrections in the last 18 months or so. And uh, we appreciate you recognizing that and appreciate Misty actually implementing those things. And um, of course, if the council has questions, they can contact you or through Misty. I brought some cards tonight. Okay. Um, I have two more documents to go through very quickly. The first one is a management letter, and it is the one that is the two pages long. It doesn't have all the attachments on it. These basically didn't rise to the level of being written up in the audit report, but just a few things to make you aware of and make sure that you've dealt with. Um, it's kind of boilerplate on the first two-thirds of the front page there. Um, but down where we get to recommendations over internal control. Um, the annual report um, is supposed to be presented within 30 days. Um, 30 days of the first meeting in March. And I know it didn't even get completed until this year, I think, when they did the 15 reports. So it needs to be something that you need to keep up on. Second one there, uh, city policy requires two signatures on all checks. Um, we did a lot of, of internal control testing and we look at checks and so on. We found one exception where only one signature on a check during 14. So. And then the last one, Um, I think you've already addressed this one too. It goes to overtime and just that we noticed that you were paying overtime on any hours over 40 rather than actual worked hours over 40. That means not paying overtime when there's vacation or leave or holiday taken that week. It was a little painful, but yes, we did address that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> We are following our policy for that now. Um, and then the last letter there, which has some attachments to it. Um, this is um, something fairly new in the audit world in the last five or six years. It's, it's called the letter to governance. We do a letter, letter of planning and we go through and say, here's what our engagement letter said, here's what we're gonna do. This is kind of the same thing, only it's at the end, okay? Um, under a significant audit findings, the first paragraph there of note is, we noted no transactions entered into the government unit by the year for which there is a lack of authoritative guidance, and all significant transactions have been recognized in the financial statements. It's kind of a double whammy on, on what we've said in the audit report itself. 
Um, accounting estimates, the only estimates in your books are depreciation, compensated absences, and the uncollectible amounts on the receivables. But we did review all the methodology and believe that it's reasonable for each one of those. We do believe that the financial statement disclosures are neutral, consistent, and clear. Um, we did not encounter any significant difficulties in dealing with management in performing or completing our auto work. Under corrected and uncorrected misstatements, that's what the attachments are here. Um, the drill entries are included that came up during the audit. And then there were several adjustments that were found but were not posted. And so this just tells you what we saw that remained uncollected or uncorrected. Um, but it didn't affect our opinion. Neither one were material enough in order to do that. I'm having a little trouble understanding. Yeah, I can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> um, the attachments, the first one I believe are the audit entries that we made. Those are corrections that were proposed in the books during our audit procedures. The second attachment are what we call past adjustments. They were items that we found, um, but that we did not post, or management did not agree to post at the end of the year, okay? Um, neither one of those two adjustments were material or affected the financial statement to such a degree that it affected our opinion in any way. Does that help? Yep, that's good. You talk and then it like kind of goes good. <laughs> I'm it's an accountant, fine. you know? I never thought I would have to do public speaking when I became an accountant, but unfortunately I do a lot of it, so good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> um, and then the last attachment to this letter is under management reps. We do ask that management sign this representation letter, which I'm hoping to pick up tonight. Um, just going through with management, You've told us everything, you've given us everything, you haven't hidden anything from us, and um, um, you agree to post any audit adjustments and so on. Um, we've attached a copy for you to review, um, and we did ask that the mayor and Ms. both sign it. Um, there were no consultations with any other accountants that we're aware of, and we did have a fee account, I'm not, and I'm not ignoring that. Um, but occasionally there will be disagreements on accounting principles, and so nothing like that to report to you. Um, and then the other matters paragraph, just to reiterate one more time that we did not audit the Housing Authority, and that we are relying on the other auditors. Do you all understand that one? Yes. Just to make sure we're clear. Okay. Okay. They have a board. They are expected to go through their financials and report, they do report to the city. Well, and it is audited by other auditors, and yes. we do communicate with them, discuss with them their procedures and so on. So. Any other questions or discussion items? And again, this was 2014. <laughs> So it's it's odd, um, but it's it was we're playing catch up. Um, I think the city people should know we have done a lot of changes to help Misty get some of this taken care of with our computer system, and um, we've done a lot of changes to make it easier for us for the next few years. Right, Misty? Right. And our POS systems at the to the golf course and all the things are making it easier for her. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Can I assume then that this is garbage? This one supersedes? There was one difference I found, but that was okay. You explained it. Thank you. You need both copies, Mr. Yeah, Give this one to all. Yeah. If it's necessary, I think uh, uh, 
only if it's necessary, we should make an, uh, a motion to accept this audit. Yeah. I, think we I would make second. that motion. Yeah, I'll second it. Um, Andrea and Georgia tied, so <clears throat> I always let you figure those out. Oh, okay. I, I suppose to Andrea, you maybe you want me to because you weren't here. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank Appreciate you. you coming down. Will we have uh, 2015 next year or next week? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're now going to be current with these. So it was, it was, was the objective. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go to the next item, which is communications from the public. I'm going to call him Rip. Are you here somewhere? I'm blinded. Thank you. Back. Either one. I probably would look like better for you. Cool. Hello, Mayor, uh, Mayor Donnell and Hot Springs Council. Uh, my name is Matt Rippentrop. Uh, I'm helping with the youth uh, baseball this uh, spring and summer. Um, Nolan, before I dive into this, do you want to lead into this or would you like me to? Go ahead. They have a small brief on what you're presenting on. Right? Okay. Feel free. Um, um, start, we started with the Park and Rec Board uh, talking about putting some lights on the uh, baseball slash softball field just north of the Legion baseball field and uh, just kind of threw out the idea that we needed the lights for the reason being is we're in the Shadron League this year. Uh, prior years we were in the Black Hills League with uh, Custer, Edgemont, and Hermosa. Uh, didn't work out really well. Um, long story short, uh, it's, a, it's a, a great deal for the kids to be able to be in a Shadron League and have something, uh, a competitive league, and be able to I'm trying to think of the word, uh, some organization, better organization, I should say. At no fault to the city of Hot Springs, it's it's going to the other towns where it's, it was always tough. We have 40 kids, uh, boys and girls, out for the three teams for 10 and under and 12 and under. So we'll have three teams playing in the Shattering League. Uh, the reason we need the lights is uh, the games are played at six o'clock and eight o'clock. Shattering cannot come up here and play a game. Crawford can't come up here and play a game uh, with no lights on the field. So this coming year, we're doing all our games either at Crawford or Shadron. Uh, and they're on a Tuesday or Thursday night. We're only going down there one day a week. Shadron was willing to work with us, so we wouldn't have to travel. If we don't get these lights, it'll always be traveling to Shadron and Crawford. Um, at the Park and Rec meeting, we discussed different ideas of how to potentially fund this. Uh, Nolan was in discussion with potentially Black Hills Power. Could they help out with the polls? Uh, you've also jumped in here knowing if I'm wrong I've uh, been speaking with the school about potentially the old lights at the football field yep, right. and uh, also we spoke with the uh, Southern Hills Community Recreation Initiative to potentially help out with uh, the 501 C3 uh, to install the electrical uh, to, to get the lights wired up I should say what 501 C3 they're a nonprofit 501c3. We'd be able to work with a contractor to be able to potentially do a donation to install the, you know, to get the wire. So there's a 501c3 already. It's Southern Hills Community Recreation Initiative. Okay. Oh, okay. We were trying to brainstorm how to fund this in uh, a previous town I lived in. That's the way we were able to do some things on the ball field was to go work. You know, we formed our own 501c3 baseball association. And the reason I'm here today is. I don't, we don't want to wait to get this in front of the city for it to go on the budget. Uh, we want to catch this budget. If you guys are interested in jumping on board and the city can afford to put the lights on the ball field for the kids, and also the adults use this field for the softball. If we miss this budget, we're looking at this potential wouldn't happen until the spring of 2018. So that's why we're jump, you know, trying to hustle along as fast as we could. And we'd like the city to consider this to be in the upcoming budget for 2017. For a potential project in the spring of 2017. Do you have an amount at all? No, I don't have an amount. Um, kind of did this one a little different. Uh, last one I did, we kind of took the bull by the horns. This one, it's just, uh, 
kind of taking the approach this is a city field city complex uh, if the fundraiser needs to be to get the kids jerseys balls bats equipment we're all on board uh, but we kind of feel this is a city's complex and this, it's the city's responsibility to put those lights on and uh, you know we'd be willing to help anybody with volunteer work which we've already been doing uh, whatever it takes but cost associated with it that's why we're here do you have an idea about how much it's going to cost to get the lights put up for, for the city's cost to get into the budget for 2017? Nolan, you want to take that mic? I, I'm going to let Nolan jump in here because I don't want to, I, I got some numbers, but I just don't want to throw them out without Nolan saying. He's, he's been in discussion too. There's uh, some variables to consider when you ask for a bottom line figure. One of those is, can we get lights donated to the city from the school district? when they convert to LEDs at the football field. And based on this conversation tonight, if there's interest by the council, we can submit a letter to the school board making that request. And if we get lights, well, that cuts off a big chunk of uh, money right there. So if we have lights donated, that's a reduced cost. Further, if we have Black Hills Power cooperating with us to set the poles, there's another reduced cost. And then third, if we work with Southern Hills Community Recreation Initiative to work with an electrician to do uh, um, maybe some in-kind labor, as well as city funded labor to wire those again you can reduce the cost there so um, to give a, a hard figure it's difficult to do because there's incentives we can pursue to make it more cost affordable to us the first i guess domino to fall though is the lights the school is looking to update to led if we write a letter to the school board making the request then we now have the light banks uh, in our possession and we can start budgeting toward the installation of those also be the electricity is an ongoing cost but right. there's an increased rate for ball field there's a ballpark rate through black hills power that makes it more cost affordable to us to, to light those i remember when we put the ones in from the va yeah, we, that's exactly if, if you're familiar with the yeah. site now we have two light poles set there they're not wired in though they don't have bulbs either they're actually okay. just sitting there so we'd look yes. at the light throw first off if we need you know three more in the outfield or if you want to do five six total lights uh, the quantity first and then figure out then is there a requirement for that league for how many lights or i know there, there's no requirement just yeah. you know no one i've been talking how many lights how many poles it just kind of depends on how many lights are on each pole you know you've seen where two are in the infield three are in the outfield or vice versa it's just going to boil down to how many lights you can put on one pole well, I think we need to get a letter off to the Board of Education. With that, I guess that's our next step as a city to make that request, and then we'll follow up with our contacts to try and narrow down. A yeah, price, I'll make that motion. A Have price to work with our budget. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Good. It's, it's basically us getting direction from the council to write the letter. I think if he writes, you know, gets the letter and gets back to us, then we can get yeah. work a, on it. I have a question for you because they're replacing with the LED. Are we going to be looking at doing something like that shortly too, or what? You know. I would know that'd be a city question. I don't know what you guys. I just know we need the lights. Uh, I would close in saying that there is no Legion team in, in Hot Springs right now. There is no Teener baseball team in Hot Springs. If we want baseball to continue in this town, this is the first place we're going to have to start is get lights on this ball field. And are you guys referring to, does no one need to write that letter? Because what I'd like, when I leave here, my last question to you is, is what else do I need to do to keep the ball rolling to get this potentially on the budget for you guys for this coming year? Just work with Nolan, I think. Um, yeah. get the letter. It doesn't cost anything to write a letter, so I would say at least get that far, get the lights so in our possession, and then from there you can, you know, work out the, the next step. The next step is if we submit the letter to the school board, maybe attend that meeting as well, and we can possibly attend again depending on when it's scheduled to make the same informational pitch to them what we intend to do with these. Um, going back to your question, George, about LED conversion, I see a free donation of lights as low hanging fruit for us. If we have funds available, it would be nice if they are LED, but that's going to add additional cost to it. So where we lose money is the operating cost, but where we gain is the, the readily available and extremely low cost to since, us. Since you're doing that with the plunge right now, 
Can you get a comparison between the two for us? They can certainly. In fact, GenPro is doing the school's contract, and that's who quoted us at Evans Plunge as well. It most likely be a bulb conversion versus a fixture conversion yeah. because the school's doing the fixture conversion. Okay. Let's take it one step at a time. Let's get the lights from the school board. Who seconded your motion? The Andrea. And basically, I'm getting. Yeah. I'm getting uh, approval from the council to write a letter. It's not necessarily an expense of money. If the school board decides to grant it to us at a certain price, they'll come back to the council to make that uh, make that decision at that time. I think if you get a hold of Black Hills Power and Light and give them some measurements on your ball field, they would be able to tell you how many lights you need and where you need to place them. Then you'd have a, a number you could shoot for. And when you get that number at that time, you could also go ahead and go probably through them or through, there's a lot of lighting outfits around here to get a ballpark figure of what it would cost you in case we did not get this from, it would cost us if the school decided they didn't want to give us these lights for some reason. I guess I don't want to see this thing stop. I want to, I, I'm trying to, to say let's you know go past the letter a little bit and their stuff so in case the school board does say no well, you know we can sell that for junk and make x number of dollars then you could come back when it comes budget time we'd have numbers or even before budget time i don't know what parks committee it's got in as far as their parks plan is concerned but i would assume that lighting is part of the parks plan is it not for the ball fields? For the ball fields? Not necessarily specifically for the ball fields, no, but lighting in Butler yeah. Park is in terms of safety and the sidewalk. Right. But ultimately, so, it, you know, but there's that's a what I'm saying is if we could get as much information as we can, you know, just ballpark figures, then we've got some place to start and we can go from there. So we could be doing something while we're waiting for the school board to get back to it. Okay, so I have a motion and a second on um, Nolan writing a letter to the school board and then reporting back the findings. All in favor of that? Aye. Opposed? Okay. So we're going to take, as Carl suggested, steps towards trying to make this happen. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting our youth. You're late for practice, by the way, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win. <laughs> All right, uh, the next item is Christy Wagner, Dakota Resources Community Engagement Update. You're early. Ma'am, thank you. Nolan has a couple of more handouts to hand out to you. Um, the staple, I'm going to uh, share the information that I'm going to share with you tonight. So first of all, um, I just want to congratulate the um, Hot Springs community for their enthusiasm and excitement and that's been going on for about the last nine months that we've been a part of this, that I've been a part of your community. And I'm gonna share with you some statistics, some numbers and some things that's happened, but I wanna show you uh, a couple of teaching pieces that we use as core um, principles in the work that we do. And first is this wonderful iceberg. And as I handed it to Nolan, he said, oh, the iceberg, right? So Chris and let's see, right? Georgia and Kara, you guys all have seen this in, in the work that we've done. <clears throat> so um, what we do is oftentimes we only see about 7% of an iceberg, right? And everything else is below the water. And so when we look and we do our community engagement work, we want to look below the waterline. So we want to look at patterns and trends 
So what's been happening and why? We ask those questions. And then we want to get to the base of the iceberg, so the structure. So it's our beliefs and our behaviors. And so we really focus a lot on learning why. We, I keep asking a lot of questions. Why, does, why is that? How come? What if? You know, what, what is true about whatever might come to the forefront of each of the committees? And so if you look on the back side of this, what we do is we have your current structure and we learn and we have time and we do little, we do, um, we reflect and we share, we learn from one another, and then we move into the doing. All right, so that will help you understand where we're at. The second learning teaching piece is we go through a purpose statement. And if you remember the core team, those of you sitting are members of the council who have been part of the core team, and we have other core team members out here tonight as well, um, we do a purpose statement and the purpose of this community engagement process was to unify hot springs for a sustainable future so everything that we would do is under the auspice of that purpose statement so we can always come back to what are we doing here right unifying hot springs for a sustainable future so the why we do that is um, the core tools of our purpose statement. I'm not gonna go through that, but I want you just to know that each of these people that have been involved in this process have gone through this and they understand. And it also, it helps us to declutter everything. And so when people walk out of the room and people say, what are you doing in the, in, uh, the tourism group, they can communicate it. Everybody is saying the same thing because they came to consensus using this purpose statement exercise. They all agreed to it, and that's what we live by then for one year. And they agree to that, and we review it each time we get together. So um, some examples that you might, and, and major corporations use this same <laughs> format. So Ford, Ford builds tough trucks. <coughs> That's their purpose. Ford builds tough trucks. The American Red Cross is, you think that I would know these because I do it all the time. It's right? disaster relief. Yeah, they provide disaster relief. Thank you, Cindy. So those are just examples. In Dakota Resources, we invest, Dakota Resources invests in communities who invest in themselves. We invest in communities who invest in themselves. So that's what that teaching piece is. So now let's come to Hot Springs, all right? So this is the, this is the number. So in uh, the end of January, we had a community gathering at which time five initiative teams kind of bubbled out of what the community said they, was important to them and what they wanted to work on. So the purpose of the, of, as I said, is unifying hot springs for a sustainable future. There are five initiative teams. First one being tourism, there's 21 participants that are, are actively engaged in that. Um, we, we did not reinvent the wheel. Your Chamber of Commerce has a tourism committee. They are engaged in, in that process. Um, Preston Gable is, oops, right? Preston is our um, core team member. I've also included a list of the core team members on the back of that. Um, so these are the, and Brian Spitzer, who's with us tonight, he's our chief instigator, we call him, or he's our champion of our core team. And so Preston Gable is the core team member to tourism, and Bethany Cook and Delise Simmons are the champions of that 
core team. We have 21 participants. Um, their purpose is leveraging our resources to maximize tourism and visitor experience. Some of the things that they've identified by at, that they're learning about is um, there was a tourism survey that was done and we reviewed that and we identified that water, the water is the, is the chief principle of that survey. Um, you also received information on this BH, uh, the Black Hills State University study. Um, there was, there were four specific areas that came out of that um, that really bubble up as priorities for this for this group. It's that Hot Springs is is about wellness in the tourism industry. It's about uh, the outdoor enthusiast. It's about the history and the culture of your community. And then the specialty niche markets around, um, and there's three areas that they are focusing on. First of all are the wedding opportunities, holding that up, um, the mountain biking, and then hot air balloon. Uh, the hot air balloon experience, and there's a group of people that are working to put a hot air balloon activity together for this fall. Um, the second one is housing. There are 16 participants. Uh, their purpose is building housing partnerships. Brian is the core team member who is, is um, on that housing group. And Greg Faust, who is also the housing authority executive, is the champion for that um, group. And um, um, what, what they're working on, as you know, because you're a partner in it, is the housing study, which has been approved. It's a match with South Dakota Housing Authority, um, so that your local housing authority, the city, and um, this group is, is working on that, and so we're really excited about that. I have personally worked with Steve. Um, on a number of different communities that I'm involved in doing this same process. He's wonderful and you will definitely in, appreciate what he brings forward in, in your community. One of the things Greg also attended a, a one-day learning session that the South Dakota Housing Authority recently had and brought back to this group that and what this group is going to be doing from now for the next 60 days is really building the local housing team. Um, what they did is they identified sectors of the community that voices that need to be in the conversation, um, like realtors, um, appraisers, property owners, developers, and, and actually identified specific people and they, they assign people to invite those people into that group. So this 16 participants is going to be growing. Third are the business, is the business group. There's 25 participants. Their purpose is to create and inspire sustainable economic growth. Um, Andrea Powers is the, the convening team member. And Mark Spurlick and Joanne, Joan Howard are the two champions of that group. Um, they are working, looking into geothermal, uh, small industry and manufacturing infrastructure, um, your current infrastructure, and how do we fill the empty buildings, and what are, what are the current needs of current business owners. So they're actually going out and talking to current business owners. So, um, those are some activities that are happening. They have a 90-day challenge um, with some specifics in those areas. So um, they're working on that. So the, the fourth one is health and wellness. There are 28 participants. Their purpose is to cultivate and, it's supposed to be, cultivate the oasis and, and not and, my typo, to cultivate an oasis for health and wellness. Okay, it's kind of creative. Um, so, Kara is their core team member, and Nate and Allison, or Rit, 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 I always want to say Rudabush because he was my pastor years ago. Rittenbush, yeah, right, that, 
but you know. Barb Milstead and Kim Moyer are champions of that group. Um, they are, the questions that they're working on, both health and wellness and recreation are, are about one meeting behind because they, um, we had some awesome, awesome conversation and I never um, wanna stop that dialogue. We want to continue that dialogue because we learn from that. So the questions that they're working on are, um, what are the current um, services in the community around um, goods and services around in the community around health and wellness? What resources do we currently have in our community? What practitioners do we have in our community? What amenities um, and facilities and services around health and wellness do we have? What is currently not being provided? Um, and what do people want? You know, what's not being provided that people want that we could possibly have, create here in Hot Springs? And then finally, um, it's recreation. We have 36 participation participants in recreation. Their purpose is to encourage and pr promote recreational opportunities. So encouraging and promoting recreational opportunities. Um, Tim Tesh is the core team member. Therese DeBoer and Denise Hayden are the champions of that um, team. And they are, their questions that um, they're researching now, and we had a very spirited meeting prior to this tonight, and um, it's what recreational opportunities are currently being provided for both adult and youth in the community, what facilities are available both indoor and outdoor, what activities are already organized, and what's not being offered um, and that people want, both of, I mean, of all ages. So um, great, great information that came forward tonight and, and we're gonna actually continue the conversation. So, and the one question that we always ask after each time or while we're together is who's not in the room, who should be in the room? And so again, I, can, I, I wanna really say that well, this is an inclusive, not an exclusive process. So we're always encouraging the people to invite, to continue to invite people to come and so these participant numbers currently, if you added all of those up, that doesn't include your core team members, just um, not all of the core team members are champion or core team representatives on here on in these. So there's 126 people currently engaged in these five areas of of work in your community. And so what the core team will do, Brian, um, we met with the core team a few weeks ago. Um, throughout the summer, as we all know, we kind of, we're running, we're hosting all of our guests, right? Our tourists who are coming through from, you know, now. I know I see that they're already here because I speak to a lot of them when I'm in town and, and um, through Labor Day. And so there, we're doing 90-day challenges in each of the, the groups so that there's this, I tend to call it low-hanging fruit that we can be working on. And then, um, and Brian will be calling the core team together. So the core team can, is now added. It's these, the people that are listed here, and then those champions that I made mention in each of these groups, um, they have also been added to the core team. So when Brian calls a meeting, um, he, they will ask for reports from each of these committees, what's happening. And we always want at least two people from those meeting or those groups to be there. So that there's a couple of sets of ears hearing because it's important to hear what's going on in the other teams so maybe there's some what you'll find is there'll be some weaving that will happen like um, you know like tourism is talking about health and wellness 
And so is health and wellness talking about that? And then all of a sudden they begin to work together, right? So that's what we want. So um, any questions? I don't have a question, but I wanted to make sure everybody knew that all the money we've been spending on surveys and write-up projects or whatever are being evaluated by these people, and so our money is not going to waste. <laughs> right. Thank you for bringing that up, Georgia, because um, that's one of the first things that the core team did is, and and I just have to, sh to give a big shout out to Kim. Um, in Barberi. Barberi, yeah. Kim Barberi, she did an excellent job of bringing, along with other members, I mean, Kara, you did too, and, um, you know, I mean, there were a lot of people, Tim, who brought forward all of these, I mean, just a, a wealth of information, documents, documentation that has been done over decades. Um, and it's still, and we asked the question, I said, all right, what's still relevant what is still relevant that are that's in this project work that has happened and i think correct me if i'm wrong but the one that is dearest to my heart was a water um survey that was done like in the 70s and there's just neat neat stuff that's still relevant and kim found that in the in your city engineer or your city whoever it is, you know, yeah, you know I mean, right? Office. Yeah, he helped, and I mean, we had such good participation from the city staff in, in helping us, and we still use it, and every, every one of these teams is referring to those documents. We've scanned them, we have them, we've read them, we, re we go back to them, um, they're relevant. So thank you. I did wanna let you know that the balloon festival group did meet and there's probably 15 people or so there and um, I will participate in that. Yeah, I, I got a report on that. Too much experience. Today. Like, it was on Thursday. Yes. It's going to be so cool. Yeah. It's so going to be so cool. We're, we're going to try to bring a festival here yeah. next year so it's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. I appreciate it the opportunity thank you Chris thanks to all 126 plus the balloon festival people that are that are helping make this happen it's it's just incredible and much appreciated thanks Chris all right I gotta stay going here today. all right I those were the only communications from the public that I was notified about is there something someone else Yes, sir. Please take your name. Good evening. My name is Pat Russell, uh, co-chairman of the Hot uh, Safety VA Committee, and I just have, have a couple questions uh, from from the city. The uh, public comment period closed on May fifth, and we we're wondering if the city of Hot Springs get their public <coughs> comments submitted before the cutoff date. Yeah, it was extended too, though, wasn't it? I've checked the Federal Register the last two weeks. I have not seen anything in the Federal Register yet. Well, I've submitted personally as the mayor, and we're going to have a report from the city planner. And I submitted myself. I sent a letter in. And, and several council members. I, I sent one before. I did too. But so, has, the city, has the city submitted a letter as a consulting party? I did as the mayor, yes, and and I did that verbally at the Red Rock, and um, we're going to have a letter from the city planner come out. That has not happened yet, but we're, it's in the process. To answer your question a little bit further, we attempted to do a cohesive response from the city council as the board, and we were, had difficulty coming to a consensus that uh, a message that all could support. And so we encourage individuals to submit representing their themselves as a council member. So uh, and thank you, no. So there the city itself as a board there's uh, was not a unified letter or uh, response to the public comment. Uh, That's correct. And we attempted to do so, it just we couldn't find a consensus. The council did the not have a consensus, so they submitted individually if they chose to. 
I had a problem with part of the letter. I don't know if anyone else did. I did. Uh, they proposed uh, alternative use for the VA, and my position is that it's too early to start throwing out suggestions what to do to just leave that out. That was my only problem with the letter. We were asked by the Historical Preservation Commission to propose an, an idea. We did not specifically give an alternative. That is incorrect. And um, that was a very small part of the letter, and we did not have consensus to do that. But we were asked to do that by the Historical Preservation so that we would discourage any thoughts of mothballing. It was directed at mothballing. And we do not want that to happen. Because uh, you know, uh, we have seen responses from uh, all of the other consulting parties to include the State Historic Preservation Officer, the um, uh, department, Parks Department. Um, and we, we described how we're handling it as a city. I submitted as, a, as the mayor in person. And we've had council members submit, and we have the city planner planning to submit. That's how we're handling it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Council, Mayor, this question is for you, Cindy. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, I had one of my political signs removed from a yard from um, residents who came to me embarrassed to bring back my sign stating that you had stated that it was a conflict of interest. Can you explain to me what the conflict of interest with your sign I'm not going to do that publicly now, but I, I'll be happy to call you later. Okay, but publicly... That is not something we can discuss in a council meeting. Even though we're all running for city council? I mean, you're signing with several other individuals. It was the property owner's choice is the short answer, and I'll be happy to talk to you about it later. It is not something we're going to discuss in public. It's not, it's not appropriate, for my opinion. But it was appropriate to tell these landowners that it was a conflict of interest. No, the landowners made that choice. Based. Okay, thanks. The landowners made that choice. I did not. Hi, I'm John Robinson, the unit director at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, first, I just wanted to thank the council for all your support in 2016. Um, with your support, the Boys and Girls Club was able to send uh, three of our middle school students to appear to participate in the legislative session and learn about the process that all you know much so well. So I want to thank you guys for that. Um, and just to kind of let you guys know that we're gearing up for our summer program. Uh, because of your guys' support, we were able to lower our fees to make our program more affordable for all the youth in the community. Uh, some of the programs we got going on, uh, we got a local chapter of the Trips for Kids bike program, and we actually have a <coughs> Trips for Kids, Dig a Kid Mountain Biking Day coming up on June 10th. Um, anybody and everybody is welcome to participate. If you guys have any questions about that, um, contact myself or Jessica Notaboom. Uh, some of the other stuff we got going on, uh, we're doing a summer brain game read program, which is bridging that summer learning loss. So, um, swimming, biking, uh, we're in the works of uh, doing a golf program again this year, so getting kids out, golfing, learning, learning that skill, that, uh, well, I guess, kind of that, that general manner. Um, it's just an awesome program. We did it last year. We had about 20 different kids participate in that. So, um, yeah, a lot of stuff going on, but we just really wanted to thank the council for their support. And you guys are doing a great job. So. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you for doing everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Jess, too. My name is Chris Bernal. Uh, a few things. Uh, first off, with the Boys and Girls Club on Memorial Day, there's a stair climb challenge, and part of the proceeds will be going to the Boys and Girls Club, and the other part will be going to 
continuing to fix our stairs in the hot springs. So if any of you guys want to come on out, I would encourage you guys all to sign up and do the stair challenge on Memorial Day. And second, with the elections coming up, my question is, um, with the elderly that live in the state veterans home, the Pine Hills, and uh, the Seven Sisters, well, how will they have a chance to vote? Will they be able to, will you guys send them ballots to uh, have them vote? Uh, we are having a combined election with the county. Uh, the Secretary of State's website has applications for absentee voting where they can request to have ballots mailed to them. And they could also send a registered agent to the county with an authorization letter allowing that person to bring them a ballot. But it, it's not appropriate for anyone here to go to any of those places and bring a ballot and ask someone to vote. Okay. I can say that in the past, um, the State Veterans Home has um, brought a, had a sign-up time, and they have um, brought a bus down to vote. So um, I would, I don't want to speak for them, but I will say that they have always done that in the past. It's always been an option for the residents who are at the Veterans Home, so I can't imagine that would not be an option. Okay. And then I just want to say thank you, Cindy. You, you've been working real hard uh, these last two years as our mayor, and I look forward to the political forum next week on the main <laughs> I just don't want to sit in this light. <laughs> thank you, Chris. All right, any other communications from the public? All right, we're going to move on to personnel. Um, some pretty routine stuff, so I'd like to combine A through I. Motion to approve. Second. To clarify, motion to approve. A through I. Yes. Yeah. A through I. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Ordinances, second reading, supplemental appropriation ordinance number 1165. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Misty? Can I ask something? Uh, I think there might be, I don't know if anyone in the public, but maybe Misty, could you go over and tell us what these things are for, like the police supplies? Whatever, it just take a second. I'm sure I didn't bring my notes from last time, but I'll try to wing it. There, there might be you something want, I should get. Um, but I had notes in your okay. council packets explaining each one of these items at the last meeting. Sorry. That's okay. Um, the general fund had total appropriations of ten thousand eight hundred and eighty-five dollars. Of that, six hundred six thousand six hundred and eighty-five is to the police for supplies. Those are for long rifles, seven AR-15 long rifles that were approved to be purchased by the council. Um, the parks, $500 uh, general fund appropriation is for street block repairs, and that was the result of a donation the city received from an organization specifically for our stairs. We accepted it, now we're appropriating that budget authority based on that donation. Um, general government, $3,700 for equipment is for our monthly copier maintenance fee at City Hall. Uh, we did not appropriate enough for the contract throughout the year at budget time. Um, then the source of funding that is from the general fund, unassigned fund balance and that donation. Um, in the sewer fund, we are appropriating $190,800. The source of funding is from the unassigned fund balance in the sewer fund, and that is for a sludge dewatering device that was approved to be purchased by this council. Um, solid waste fund, we have $37,850 being appropriated from the solid waste fund, unassigned fund balance. That was to purchase the trash cans that were used for residential trash pickup and also the trash cans throughout the downtown area. I don't remember the breakdown between those two, but that was on that sheet that was provided. Um, and then Evans Plunge, we are supplementally appropriating $1,500 into their machinery and equipment budget line item. That appropriation, the source of funding was also from a donation 
that um, 1500 and then 2000 from their budget, I believe, are pretty close to the numbers, purchased the stair lift that will um, now take members and visitors up to the upper level. And the police long rifles, he requested that in 2015. It was in his budget, but the rifles didn't get here until 16. Is that right? To argue about whether or not that was in his bu budget was... Okay. He, I, he I, had I, funds I, available. He had the funds available. Okay, the funds were available. Not budgeted right. for those specifically. Okay. But the rifles didn't come until 16. Therefore, we're... Yeah, he didn't even time. make the purchase till the end of December. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't catch who seconded that, and I'd like to do a roll call vote, please. Okay. So I seconded it. No, you, you, I, oh, Ashley moved to yeah, second. I second. Thank you. And then uh, Carl Ashley. Yes. Tim Tesher. Yes. Georgia Holmes. Yes. Kara Hagen. Yes. Andrea Kramer. Yes. Krista Spillane. Yes. Carol Ann Schwarzenbach. Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. Committee reports, uh, Georgia, admin and finance, please. Um, we met Monday, May 9th at City Hall, and we had um, uh, talked about the um, um, health insurance programs. We have three of employees currently that are receiving a different amount, and I believe we're going to talk about that tonight. And um, we also talked about uh, the school officer through the COPS grant application, where 75% of it's paid for through the grant and 25% will be paid through, for through the city and probably will not be applied for until mid-June after budget hearings. Um, we also talked about the transient merchant issue and um, Kim is looking at uh, working that over a little better so we can actually have some of our businesses that are open right now to <coughs> sustain their viability um, and do a site plan review by the city. And that's a possible suggestion by Kim, although it's not formal right now. Um, let's see. That's basically, or the most important things that we talked about. Okay. You want to just fly into airport? <laughs> airport, uh, we didn't really have a meeting, but I know we are. We opened bids on the uh, partial taxiway, and we are going to look at that tonight. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Um, is that it? Yep. Okay. Karen, uh, chamber meets later, right? Chamber meets this Wednesday at noon, and I do have one announcement. The customer service training that was to be this Thursday, May 19th, is postponed and is going to be moved to next Wednesday, May 25th. It's free to all businesses in the community, so sign up with Olivia or Justin down here at the chamber if any of your employees want to go to the free a, a workshop for customer service from 9 to 11 a.m., and there's also one from 3 to 5 p.m. on May 5th, 25th. Great. Thank you. Um, Carolyn? We had a meeting uh, May the 4th. Uh, we approved an application for an alteration of structure at 841 Auburn Street, a sign permit uh, application at 712 University, approval of the bison mural at the intersection of Jennings and North River. We discussed improvements at 239 North River. Kara gave us an update on Kara Moccasin Springs. And Pat Like has written an excellent letter to uh, the EIS mission. And that's all. Thank you. Sounds like a very productive meeting. Appreciate that. Um, Evans Plunge Advisory Committee. Well, here. Our meeting is this Thursday at 7 p.m. Okay. All right. Um, Krista Parks Rec. Yeah, we um, didn't have our meetings are always the first Monday. Our meetings are always the first Monday of the month at 3 o'clock at City Hall. 
but um, the parks and rec um, members, four members, uh, facilitated by Gerald uh, Cunningham, uh, went ahead and got the Boy Scouts uh, um, space there at the Boy Scouts Club, and we had a meeting where we went over the par the tall grass plan. It was a two-hour meeting where we went over the clear needs in the parks plan, and. Um, so we're going to have another meeting where we do the rest of the parks because we only had a chance to do part of them. And then we'll be bringing that on June 6th, the next Parks and Recs meeting at City Hall, uh, what we kind of <coughs> found in the clear needs of the following the parks plan. And then uh, as far as like here at uh, the Mueller Center, we've got uh, We've got the candidate forum on the 23rd at 6.30 p.m. So you want to be here to see what the candidates have to say. And then we've got the state vets home presentation on the 30th and summer rec swimming sign up on the 31st. Community theater on the 24th uh, on a Tuesday. And we have job service at 9.30 in the morning on Wednesday. That was a great way to get the message out. The 30th is a Memorial Day presentation here. Thanks, Krista. Um, I'm going to go to you, Tim. Public safety. Public safety is scheduled for Wednesday. However, I will not be here, so I don't know if they'll have a meeting or not. As of now, we have no agenda for it, so we plan not to unless there's an agenda that's set. Okay. All right. You want to go into public works, please. Public works. The loading dock, by the way, is coming along nicely. The guys did go out and smooth it all out, get it ready for pavement when we can start getting some pavement. And the nice thing about this rain, other than we really needed the moisture, is it showed us where the low spots were, so now we can <laughs> smooth it all out. And I'm proud to say that we only had one puddle out there so that's doing good the albany project that is something that i'm going to have to sit down and discuss further with the mayor and the engineer we've got to get something done with that i've been in contact with some of the neighbors up there and we definitely need to have a discussion on what to do with that come in tomorrow okay boulder falls paving uh, Tracy's been out there trying to find all those points and spots and, and um, as soon as the paperwork and everything is all done up, the money's collected or whatever, we'll probably start. So hopefully that won't take too long. We also talked about the tank out at Lower Chautauqua. It's uh, what it is, is it was my understanding that some time ago it was the water source for the lower part of town. Well, the, our illustrious younger individuals, with the help of probably some illustrious older individuals, have figured out that you could pull the rocks out of the wall in that and crawl down in it. So we have a hole open there. No, we covered that. Go try by there. Unless you did it in the last two days. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Because I actually, I'll tell you one thing, though, that I took one of the guys out there right, and showed him that. And he said, well, there's no water in there. I said, yeah, there is water in there. That has got to be the clearest water I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen water that clear in that in that system. We're known for our water here. Yeah, but that is, I mean, that's that's exceptionally. Uh, they've done done some work out at our our sewer ponds with on the controls. We talked about the, the some bridge work out at the intersection of Colebrook and Badger Clark, and also fixing the our little bit of bridge work we need down here on Minicotta. And the boys have been working in the alleys, so just bear with them if you end up with 
equipment running up and down your alleys. They're just trying to keep them nice and smooth. That was it. Are they going to work on the uh, Minnacotta Bridge right there across from the Evans where there are just two holes every time you go across? Yes, ma'am. That's what we discussed. Good. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to touch on this a little bit later, but basically something, our, those materials, has not fired their asphalt plants yet, but we don't have any fill to, to mix in there. It should be end of this month they do that, and as soon as they do, we'll be able to start pothole patching, but also doing things like you just suggested. Okay. Yeah, that's on there. I have to drive over that every morning when I go down to walk, so I'm well aware of those holes. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tim. Appreciate that. A lot going on in all these different committees. Uh, Georgia decides it was a crappy day to golf. <laughs> um, I asked Jason to give me kind of a report, a rundown a little bit of some of the things. They've had preparation for two of the girls' golf tournaments, the pre-conference and the conference. Uh, that are come up. They've done really well in their um, golf tournaments, so I mean they deserve a lot of praise. <laughs> Um, but um, he, Jason just showed me some of the things. I mean, he's doing daily maintenance, of course, on everything, repairs. He did um, go and pick up the um, new mower in Denver. And then I asked him also to give me a golf course equipment inventory if anybody would like to see it. It's a lot of little numbers here, but for every year that would project something that would be replaced a little bit better so we're not breaking down and having replacements in funny times. So he gave me that and if anybody would like to look at that. Um, I don't think there's anything real spectacular. He's trying to follow the master plan right now and our uh, cart path does need repaired and we will probably have to do that when the plant gets fired up. <laughs> Um, but they're starting to, it's starting to show um, pretty good, um, pro, or quite a few problems anyway. The equipment is starting to take course, um, quality, uh, I mean we, our carts and everything are starting to show re that they need to be updated pretty good. So we'll need to keep that in mind when we do our budget in June. Okay, that's all. And I'm going to interject. Um, the. Uh, Rabbit City Journal did an excellent article, uh, Dave Noble, mm -hmm. on our, our golf, golf course and interjected a little bit about the plunge as well. So mm -hmm. if you get the Rapid City Journal, be sure yeah. to look at that article. It was You're getting a lot of good kudos. Us proud. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Andrea, volunteer fire department. Actually was absent from that meeting. Tim, do you have anything to report from that? They went over, they had all their financial reports. They did, what's not interesting about going to them is they go over every call that they've had and they explain how many people went to it, what happened. It's really an interesting meeting. And these guys are phenomenal. And, and other than just fires, they discuss the fact that there was a lot of them out on a lost child deal here in the last couple of weeks. They went out to help a lost kid. So they do more than just fight fires. But overall, I think that we're really lucky we got the fire department we got. Yeah. So, but their meetings are interesting. They yeah. are. I, yeah, I agree. I've been I highly recommend you. Go I learned a lot from my You ever wonder how that money's spent? They the do first a great Tuesday. job. First, first Tuesday. First Tuesday of every month. At seven o'clock. There's not graduation. Or <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but thank you both for uh, supporting them. Appreciate thank you, that. Tim, for doing that. All right, uh, I'm going to move to new business. Um, I need a motion to award the partial parallel taxiway bid, the low bid. How do I pronounce this? Bidimus. Bidimus. <laughs> Paving Incorporated for one million eleven thousand five hundred eighty-four dollars and forty cents. I'll make a motion to accept it. I'll second. second. Can I ask a question? Please do. Discussion. I, who who looked at the bids? Yeah, I I was going to say. The engineering firm. 
Which engineering firm? The SCH. one we've been working SCH. on. SEH. Yep. So they were okay with with. I, there was a go question in? on it, yeah. I mean, he, they've got $5,000, if I'm not correct, for quality control. Their suggestion was 25000 and 40000 in almost in mulch. And their total estimated cost was 6600 so they really, they really looked at this and they thought it was okay. Yep, so if you can recall about a month ago, you were all given a memo from SCH about this process, how it's gonna transpire. And basically, through bid law, we can't do line item bidding. We have to do a complete bid package. So the sure. bottom line number is the ultimate figure they look at. They look at their engineering estimate bottom line versus what they received back. It was higher than the engineer estimates. They went back to the state and the FAA, they're both on board paying that difference in amount. And if you notice, they are still $200,000 less than the next right. lowest bidder. So even though some line items were higher, others offset that even further to make them the low responsible bidder. I, and Caroline, I did ask the same questions today, and Eric did give us response. Um, but like Nolan said, we don't get to rebut. <laughs> No, but we can ask if someone looked at it. Yeah. The insurance company did. They all know what they're doing. No, I think it's a great thing to ask questions. And about. I think Eric recommended that it was still okay. Is the way I understood. I got an email from him. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> opposed. Thumbs up. up. We got a thumbs up. Uh, opposed. <coughs> Motion carried. All right, item B, discussion and possible motion to approve the following 2016 parades through downtown. Miss South Dakota, 4th of July, homecoming, Christmas in the Hills, and the Freedom Ride. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Somebody with a shorter name. <laughs> Well, it's never going to be you. I know. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the praise? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item C, motion to set public hearing for June 6th at 7.10 p.m. for Rotary Club Temporary Alcoholic Beverage. I made a motion we combine C through C and E. Okay. Because they're all for the same. Group. Can you do that since they're different times? I don't know. If you guys want to do it, we can do whatever you want. But state state it in the time. motion and we'll do it. He stated the motion and I'll second it. Okay, so I have a motion and a second to combine items C, D, and E, although they have separate times for their hearings. It's all with the Rotary Club and alcoholic beverage licenses. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. To interject there, for the public who's, I guess, for Lucy Bison are still here, it'll be printed in the newspaper, when to notice of hearing, it'll all be separate of each other, so it's still yeah. to the public. All right, thanks for the clarification. Item F, discussion, possible motion to approve travel. Well, we can combine all the travel. Yeah, I'll make a motion to combine F, F, G, I. H, and I. My only comment on that is I did not include a travel request form, so I'm not sure why we're requesting to approve that. Well, let's let's do F one. <coughs> no, that's for Karen and Misty. Bowden doesn't have one. Bowden, whatever his name is. Bowden. We do have one now form. At the time of publication, we didn't have one for him. Essentially, it'd be for mileage reimbursement and for meal costs, not overnight stay. But it does have, I think, in your packet the agenda for his, his training or the information on his training. He's done. Did you get a second on that? I no, I'm not second at all. I think did George, George, and I'll second. Okay, and that was to combine them all. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's yeah. F, G, H, and I. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carried. Go to the finance officer report, Ms. B. Madonna said, right? 
Yeah, yeah, like Donna said. Thank you for all staying and listening to that 2014 audit presentation. It just reminds us of all the work that we've done in the last year and how, how far we've made it. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the upcoming election. Thank you, Chris, for asking those great, great questions. Um, I did call the auditor's office today just to get the locations, um, and I'm sure the paper will print where people can go to vote on June 7th. Um, I want to remind everyone that voter registration deadline is the 23rd. Um, June 7th is the election from 7 to 7. You can vote here at the Mueller Civic Center. Uh, if you live in Oral, you can vote at the Oral School, Cascade Fire Hall, St. James Parish, and Ulrich's Community Center are all locations for voting. If you have questions, if you have kids away at school, if there's forms that you need to get, the Secretary of State website is a great resource. It's sdsos.gov. Um, just remember to vote. It's our opportunity to have our voices heard, not just in our local election, but in our um, county and state and national level. So thanks for reminding us, Chris, earlier to do that and talk about it. Make sure we tell as many people as we can um, and help them if they need help getting there so they can get out and vote too. Um, we did approve a pretty large expenditure so today. So be sure to watch for appropriation ordinances that relate to that large uh, parallel taxiway project being done at our airport. It was a recommendation and requirement from FFA that we get this done. So it's just growing our airport and moving us forward. Um, but know that that Make type it of safer. The objective is to safer. make it a safer airport. Um, that dollar amount of federal funding will require our city to go through a single audit. It's an A133 audit. I've talked to the accountants and the auditors about that for next year. Um, we're in a good position to have people come and look very closely at what we're doing and so I look forward to that. Thank you for approving that, helping um, our airport be safer and helping it grow. Uh, in the next couple weeks, June 8th through the 10th, I'll be attending Finance Officer School in Spearfish, South Dakota. This is the second time I've been able to attend. Um, thank you for approving my travel request for upcoming budget training and previously for this Finance Officer School. I wanted to let you know that this year I did receive a $200 scholarship to help pay for travel expenses from the Municipal League. They only give out about $800, so last year I received a $7,500 scholarship and this year I received a $200 scholarship so that makes me happy. I thank them for seeing something in me that encourages them to continue to support me like you have in my growth and development in this job. Um, I just also wanted to touch on the inventory finding that we had. We had two major findings um, and inventory is going to be something we're going to see again in 15 since we hadn't had an auditor hired to come and do test counts. Um, we're working on procedures for all of our different departments, something similar but different because they all count different items for different purposes. So we're working on it. You'll see it again, but you won't see it again in 16 <laughs> as long as I'm here. Thanks, Ms. That's Thank all I got. Thanks. Nola, to the event. The stranger. Yeah, the council has an itemized list of different updates regarding all our different departments. I'll keep it short though and brief. For the public's benefit, this Wednesday at 4.30 p.m., the Special Olympics torch will come through Hot Springs. It'll start at the county courthouse and end at the, the current ambulance building with the police escort. So if you're in town, downtown at around 4.30, be mindful of that. Like Misty said and others before her, June 7th is election day. We will have, after that time, a special meeting to canvas the results. We will announce that meeting time at the June 6th meeting, and then also publish a notice of quorum for the public as well. Um, on Memorial Day coming up, so we'll meet until after then, city offices will be closed at City Hall and other entities, although the plunge and the golf course will be open on Memorial Day. And then also, if you're familiar with the Helen McGee collection of the public library, we have received back all of our items. They've been 100% digitized, <coughs> and they will soon be made available to the full public, whether they be at the library. I believe, though, the library board might have interest in making it available uh, at any location. So if you're on your computer at home, you can still see the full collection, just like you would at the library. Um, other than that, you guys have other items. If you have questions, like always, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to give more details on these.
taking on and also I believe that on the on Wednesday at 4:30 that might be something that you might want to come out and support the spe Special Olympics uh, group with and line up along the sidewalks and cheer them on um, that's Wednesday at 4:30 downtown the other thing I wanted to mention is the uh, South Dakota Department of Environmental and Natural Resources awarded the city of Hot Springs um, award the satisfactory, satisfactory operation and maintenance of our domestic wastewater treatment facility. I know that's not exciting, but if it doesn't work properly, I'll hear a lot about it. So I'm very proud of our team there for, for getting this award. So um, flush your toilets with uh, confidence. <laughs> but I, 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 wanna, I try to recognize the, the uh, department. You don't need to quote me on that. <laughs> but I do like to recognize our departments. You know, there's a lot of good things that are going on with our departments within the city, and um, I just want everybody to know that they're doing their jobs, and they're doing their jobs well, and we're being recognized by the state, and wastewater gets the kudos this week. So um, that's all I have, and uh, we have on our agenda to go into executive session if the council so desires. Motion to go into executive session. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Opposed? Session and it is unlikely we will be making decisions afterwards, John. So. Hey, Nolan. Here it says that um, about the uniforms for the baseball. There were two um, donors that were ready to donate the, the uniforms for the baseball. What was the reason behind um, having the golf for attending and the golf course paid for those? Were they I ain't Jean. <laughs> What was the cost for that for uniforms to be purchased that came out of Evans Plunge and the Southern Ass? Eighteen dollars Oh, 